Okay, welcome everybody to our UPF Ireland inaugural Cyber Faith Roundtable. Um, thank you all for coming. I hope you'll have a few more people joining us. We have our presenter today in our first uh, Zoominar is Yemi, Councillor Yemi Adenuga. You may have heard, some people may have heard from her before. Um, so she is the first black female councillor in Ireland, in the Republic of Ireland at least. I'm not sure about Northern Ireland. I don't, I'm not sure. I think she must also be for the whole of Ireland, the first black female elected representative to a body such as a council. So we're very privileged that she's going to address us this evening in our first Cyber Faith Roundtable. So this idea, it's just something we're gonna see over the next couple of months if this works or not. And it's, it's a chance for people from faith communities to come and to talk about important things to them and to their beliefs and to their values, you know, marriage, family, education, young people, you know, topics like that. So we're hoping that this can be a, a round table idea where if you're a Catholic or a Protestant or, Muslim, Jewish, doesn't matter what faith, but we, we share common interests and, uh, you know, people should come and really express themselves and see how can we contribute to society, a society in Ireland today, which is becoming more and more secular and less interested in maybe the value systems of the past and maybe for good reasons. The Catholic Church, for example, was really dominant in, in our society, in, in the Republic and, and the Church of Ireland or the Protestant churches in, in the north. So I think it's time for a new sort of cooperation with people of faith. So that's what UPF is trying to do. And um, so we want to imagine a new Ireland where, you know, we have peace and harmony and where people of faith feel included as well in the whole diversity and inclusion thing. So we're very privileged that uh, Yemi, Councillor Yemi Adenuga is joining us today and she's going to be our first speaker. And just to give you a little bit of background on uh, Councillor Adenuga. So she was, uh, came to prominence, I suppose, on, on our TV screens a couple of years ago. Um, excuse me, sorry, I'm just bringing up her bio here. I don't know if people have heard people watch TV much, but um, she is a, a, she, she talks in her bio here about energy and motion, which is a leadership powerhouse of ideas. And uh, it, it kind of takes on different caps at different times. And she says it's, um, she likes, she invests in people. She likes to build people is, is what she says. And uh, her story is one of determination, courage, and perseverance. She was born and raised in a, a, a polyamorous house where her father had seven wives and 27 children. And she's number 16 in the uh, family in terms of the children. Her mother was the last of the seven wives with six biological daughters, four stepdaughters, and no son. Her mother raised 10 girls and was told by her husband's family that the, girl, that the 10 girls would never equal one boy, that they would amount to nothing. Be nobodies who would end up on the streets of Lagos as prostitutes. Yemi was only 13 years old when she heard those words. Those words became the motivation for Yemi's determination to be somebody. Um, I, I, I think we've got some people waiting to get in there. Can you see them? Where do you see that? I don't know. No, I don't think so. Yeah, he was asking. Yeah. Okay. So um, I think we have a few people just waiting to get in there. Apologies for my admit all. Everyone in? Everybody in? I think we have a few people just waiting to get in there. Yeah. Jeez, for my admit all. Everyone in? Everybody in? Okay. 
Yeah. Thank you all for joining us this evening. We're just waiting for Councillor Yemi Adenuga to, um, to join us. So I was reading a little biography of Yemi's story. And um, yeah, so just to let you know as well, we're recording this tonight so we can um, view it on YouTube in the future. This is our first Cyber Faith Roundtable. And okay. um, if a bi monthly initiative. So, Yami's going to be we're very privileged to have her as our first speaker this evening. And just waiting for her to come in. So, while I'm waiting for her to join us, we um, asked, or I, I've done a little biography here. So, um, Yami believes that nobody has the right to tell anybody that they cannot be somebody, and that anybody who is determined to be somebody can be. Against all odds, she turned the words of her father's family around and made a success of her life with nothing but a dream to be somebody, a determination to discover her purpose and an openness to embrace possibilities. Yemi built valuable life skills, learned to recognize, take and use opportunities well and is now paying it forward through her people building programs that change lives across the globe. So as I said before, we had our last couple of people joining us there and sorry for my slowness on the controls tonight, but um, she's the first black female councillor to be a uh, public representative to be elected in um, Ireland, in the Republic at least, I think also in, in the North. So we're very privileged that she's gonna address us tonight. This is a forum for people of faith who feel they want to contribute to society Oftentimes, people of different faiths feel left out in society today. They feel they don't have a contribution to make or that their message about God, about family, about true love, about um, character education, that, that, that that's not important in our new secular society. So we're in UPF. We want to be a place that can stand up for religious people, for people of faith and give them a forum and give them a voice. So I hope that you all, and I really thank you so much for coming tonight and that we can every two months see how this initiative goes, this Cyber Faith Roundtable. I've tried to have a different speaker. If you have a topic that you're passionate about that you would like to bring to our um, roundtable, please tell me and we can put you down for our bi-monthly event. Um, it's just an hour and we'll have a question and answer session. So please listen to the speaker tonight and prepare your question. And hopefully that will draw out some interesting responses. And we want to be a little bit sort of inquisitorial Colin, can I... without being uh, too kind of controversial. Sorry, you yeah, Colin, um, <clears throat> are you seeing people that are asking to get in or that are waiting? No, I think us? everyone is in though, because I want to admit all. Sure. Because Miriam said she was looking. Yeah, but I think also there's is the Facebook link a live stream? Yeah. You put a Facebook Tinko's link doing in the that. chat. Tinko. Okay. So I've um, got three, six, nine people who I've admitted, but I don't have any more admit requests. So I, I don't know. She's so the last she needs link to ask to come in because I just went admit all, you know. And Tinko, I get because the last uh, link you shared on the group. Sorry, that was a Facebook link. But if you go back to the, um, if you're on the UPF WhatsApp group, you can go in through the, um, just scroll back a couple of posts and you'll see the, the yeah. invite for Zoom. Obviously, anyone okay. who's on the Zoom call has already done that. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Just gonna you're sending that out again, are you? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think if you're watching on Facebook, obviously you can't interact very well, but it, and then, well, Tinko can, can, it will be monitoring that. But if you're watching on, on Zoom, you're like a panelist, you can ask questions there and stuff. But maybe Tinko, if you see anything interesting on Facebook, you can put it to the group, will you? Tinko? <laughs> maybe is, he, is he able to hear me? Tinko, if you see anything on Facebook that, that's interesting, would you um, please share it with the group, yeah? Okay, so we're just waiting a few more minutes for, for uh, Yemi. And uh, I'll just continue with, so she's on a mission uh, to 
empower women and young people globally and through her mentorship program, the Yemi Adenuga Mentorship and Leadership Program. That's Y-A-M-A-L. I don't know if you say YAMAL. This dynamic yes. storyteller and role model demonstrates her... Um, yeah, there is a bit of delay. Yeah. With me, is it? Uh, I'm not hearing a delay unless he's watching it on the Facebook link as well. Maybe, maybe. on Facebook, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, so did you hear my question? Um, um, sorry, Tinko, you're going, we're going to ask you to monitor the Facebook for any, I don't know if we have anybody on Facebook. We must have somebody, people who couldn't get into Zoom maybe because I posted the link. What's this yes thing here? No. Okay, so her motto in life is what is worth doing is worth doing well. And she's risen through adversity and challenges, breaking barriers and making history along the way. As a history maker, Yemi is the first female presenter to present a program on the first private radio station in Nigeria, Ray Power 100 FM. Uh, the director and producer of the first program ever to be aired on the first private television station in Nigeria, Africa Independent Television. And the first ever black female public representative to be elected in the Republic of Ireland and the first migrant councillor to be elected into Mead County Council. And the first migrant to ever be written into an Irish school textbook, the sixth class geography and science textbook by Fallen's publishers and making her a topic of study in primary schools across Ireland. Um, this multi-award winning leadership expert is listed as an Irish woman of influence by the Irish Tatler magazine and the Irish Independent in its weekend magazine called Yemi a game changer in Irish politics. Uh, she's a seasoned broadcaster of nearly three decades who hosted and produced the multi, the multi award winning TV talk show Sharing with Yemi, which was Nigeria's leading talk show from 1996 to 2000. Uh, the program now airs on Facebook with the viewership as high as 10,000 an episode. And Yemi is a confidence building coach, an experienced people development strategist, a high impact global speaker, and a relationship mentor. Now, just to let everybody know, she said she's going to be a few minutes late, so we're just waiting for her to join. And if anyone has any questions about the topic today, which is um, inspiring or helping young boys to become good men, it's a leadership or a mentorship program, for character education for young boys or young men who will become, you know, young boys who become men, obviously. So this is what Shiro's is about, character education. So she encourage us to be, maybe engage into the topic and if people have any comments to make or any any questions please put it I'll open the floor as if anyone has any obviously we have yet to hear her speak about the details of the program but just to get yourself thinking about the topic does anyone have anything they'd like to share about that or any comments okay. Uh, well, I would just say while we're waiting, I, th I think the idea of mm. focusing on, you know, reaching young men, especially in kind of like oh, the Facebook. modern world. Oh, do I have a delay there, Colin? Yeah, no, I'm listening. Sorry, Miami's just said she's in the waiting room. I don't know, is that on Facebook or on, on the Zoom call? It might be on the Zoom call because I don't think there's a waiting room on Facebook. Yeah, where's the waiting room? Yeah, where is it? There isn't a way Maybe he just, I've, I've admitted everybody. Just do it again. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I can't do it again. I need to send her the link again. Just bear with me one sec. Okay. Yeah, carry on, Eli. Sorry. What were you saying? Uh, I was just saying, you know, I very much, when I heard about this program she's working on, mm -hmm. um, I just think it's very interesting to focus on, on young men because I think <clears throat> it's, it's kind of, um, I don't want to say completely unique, but you know, there's a tendency where mm -hmm. people focus, you know, in history, it's always, um, you know, a lot of patriarchal, patriarchal 
countries, for example, it's like, oh, the boys can do whatever they want, mm. but then, you know, the women have to be trained or restricted or they have to prepare for marriage. And it's, it's historically, it's been very unbalanced in, in that regard. And so, you know, obviously there's a backlash in Western culture, you know, it's, everyone should just do whatever they want, but that doesn't seem to work either, right? Um, and it just leads to a lot of kind of unhealthy relationships and stuff. So I think that's what I, um, that's what I thought was just very interesting, an idea that, you know, focusing on educating young men and, and giving young men encouragement and mentorship is, is just kind of a, a very good way to try to balance that. Um, so that's all, it's just, you asked for comments. So that's kind of sure, what yeah, I've been thinking yeah. since I heard about it. So I'd like to say hi to everybody. Uh, we're just waiting for Yemi. I think she's here now. Yemi, are you here? Can you hear us? She's not in the call yet. I just admitted her, I think. <laughs> okay, I'm admitting her again, sorry. I mustn't have done it right. She's joining now, so. Yemi, do we have Yemi? I'd like to say hi to the Klinger family from Liechtenstein. Hi everyone. Joining us all the way from. Hey guys. I think, hi. Hey Yemi, welcome what to the We were talking about you here, your bio, very impressive. Can you hear us? Maybe you can unmute, hang on. Yemi, are you muted or unmuted? What are you? What is your status? Can you Say, something. <laughs> Say something. We can hear you now, Yemi. You were frozen for a bit, but you seem to be that. <laughs> I think Facebook, the sound on Facebook might be, there might be problems with that, Tinko. Some people are reporting they can't hear anything on Facebook. Okay, Yemi, over to you. She's frozen, freezing a little bit there. Oh. Okay, she's back. Okay. But yeah. everybody can hear me, yes? yes? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Can everybody hear me? I don't know. Maybe I'll use my phone because it seems like the laptop. Yeah. Okay, I'll do that. I'll, re I'll disconnect and then use my phone. Sometimes the phone's better. No, we can hear you. We can hear you. Okay. We can all hear you now. Yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah. She'll come back on the phone. <laughs> so you'll have to let her back in, Colin. She'll go into the waiting room again. Okay. All right. So just. Um, I'll wait for her to come back in. Yeah, I think young people today, maybe we, our men in particular, they seem to be not so, not so popular in society. I think the women would probably disagree. In the no. past, it was the other way around, was it? What do you mean popular? Well, yeah, I wouldn't you're... use the word popular. I just mean that, you know. <laughs> They're it's... not encouraged to be masculine or to, you know, show any sort of. What about uh, Professor Klingler? Would you have an opinion on that? Mm, I think I think that concept is changing. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's 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 a question of of maybe sometimes very external uh influences but i think the truth of the matter is there is you know we were we were made as as men and women and um and and i think that's a good starting point generally speaking yeah and if you try to see this as as an equal uh yeah. i think that's even a better starting point sure sure so maybe things are getting more equal maybe that's a good thing it's not that men are being encouraged to not to be men anymore. It's just that there things are getting more balanced nowadays, is it? More opportunities for both. Yeah, if you look at opportunities, and mm. uh, I think that's definitely the case. If it's always executed in a in a good way, that's another question, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. What about Matthias? Would you have an opinion on that? Um, yeah, just let boys be boys and girls be girls. Sorry, I I meant to. Sorry, what was that, Stefan? Oh, Matthias? okay. I was just 
I am muted. Hold on a second. We can hear you. We can hear you. Oh, you can hear me. Okay, yeah. brilliant. Yeah, I was just saying, let boys be boys and girls be girls and don't make them try to be something they're not. <laughs> yeah. Fundamentally. Okay, you hear me? Uh, is she trying to get in again? Do we have her? So just to let you know, people, um, thank you for joining us this evening. It's our first inaugural uh, Cyber Faith Round Table. It's <clears throat> based on an idea we had a couple of years ago on the radio station in Phoenix FM in Blanchardstown, where we had a, an interfaith round table. We had representatives from different faiths who talked about different topics, marriage, um, you know, different things in society, political events and stuff, um, relationships in general, education in the schools. Today we're talking about character education and uh, she, the Shiro's project with uh, Yemi Adenuga, Councillor Adenuga. She's just changing device at the moment. But um, yeah, so ne in next month or in the next session in two months' time is Bruno Maris. And he's going to talk to us about his project that he's doing. Bruno, would you like to give us a little preview of what you're going to be talking about? Can you hear me, Bruno? Just unmute him. Uh, okay. Can you hear now? Yeah. Uh, I can't see yeah. you. <laughs> You're hiding. Sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah, the camera is not in a great position. Oh, okay. And it, yeah. Um, yeah, basically it's going to be about living for the sake of others, which is, I think, is a great character education for uh, boy, girls, young people, old people, for whatever, for anybody. Um, it's, 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 it's based on one of the principles of UPF of, of living for the sake of others. And uh, um, so I'm going to talk about, I'm going to mention about the, the charity work that we are doing and, and how that is affecting people. But not only about that, it's also about the fact that you can change things around um, where you are. Like, so it's going to be, it's going to be a bit connection with, 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 um, of course, this with, is, with yeah, God. Eju, and, EduCare, and, isn't it? Your project is called EduCare, EduCare. How do you pronounce yeah, yeah. it? EduCare, yeah. EduCare mm. for youth, EduCare for youth. And um, it's going to be connected also with um, with, with the religious side of it. And, and, and um, um, yeah, I hope it. I hope it's gonna gonna be nice. I hope. Sure, you you've been doing a lot of fundraising for that. Uh, for that. I'm more than the fundraising. More than the fundraising itself, it's it's the, the actual project that we're trying to change people's life. So I right. think that's that, that's what it's. Um, what, G what giving is education nice. to people maybe who wouldn't normally have the chance for that education, is it? I mean, yeah, yeah, exactly. So it has to do. There are different areas, there are different problematics, uh, different you know, different countries, different problematics on how yeah. or the, on the education. Of course, most the vast majority is, is poverty that that doesn't that prevent people from getting education. Uh, there are other factors as well, like uh, child labor and all this kind of thing. So th Very this good. Is, it's Very quite good. quite a big um, area of of, of work and. Um, yeah, with all the education that we have in the West uh, and available, and you know, so much free education that is available, like it's 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 mind-boggling that yeah. that people still not be able to go to school. Um, in the developing so, world, it's a game changer, isn't it? If you have access to proper education or good education, that it's, can it's, you yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly, exactly. Great, thank you, Bruno. Yeah. So we look forward to that in uh, February. Mm -hmm. I think that one is. Uh, the, I think it's the first Saturday in February in two months' time. So we have Yemi back again after changing devices. How are you now? Can we hear you now? Can we see? We can see you anyway. Can you hear me now? You're looking well. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. Very yeah, good. Yeah, we can all hear you, Yemi. Hi, everybody. Happy December. Yay. Happy Yay. December. <laughs> the devil is a liar. <laughs> yeah. Take it away. Tell us all about this Shiros. What is it? What are you doing? Thank you very much. It's so delightful to be here again and um, to share with everyone. I trust everybody's keeping safe. Uh, it's been a tough year. 2020 has been a tough mm. year, but uh, God is tougher. 
and God has seen us through the re the challenges, Amen. you know, Amen, yeah. that have kind of characterized 2020. But, you know, I always say that when everything is smooth and rosy, sometimes we tend to forget, you know, how powerful God is. So sometimes he allows those things to remind us that he's all powerful and um, we need to always remember that. So I thank God that we're all here alive and well. And I would really want to thank um, Colum and the team for giving me the platform to be able to share the vision of uh, the Heroes Voice to Men project. So I'm going to start off by just explaining, giving the background of what Shiro's itself is, mm -hmm. and then why we're running the Boys to Men project. So Shiro's itself is a not-for-profit organization. So we're so slowly um, becoming, uh, Zoom has no longer a time limit, fantastic. We're slowly becoming uh, an, uh, a social enterprise. So the idea of Shiro's itself started in 2012. And at the time, it was just trying to encourage women from migrant, back, migrant background to be a bit more supportive of themselves. And um, a number of the women who recognized me, some of them African, especially those who were Nigerian, who remembered me from back in Nigeria. I used to work in the media and television. They remembered me from there. So they would come to me and share some of the challenges they were going through at the time. Most of them being that they were having difficulties with their husbands, as most of the women were here by themselves uh, in Ireland, by themselves and raising the kids by themselves. Uh, so yes, the men were still in control. The men would ask them, where are you? What are you doing? You know, why are you home late? And the women would explain that they're working. So why are you closing so late? The men could not understand the system of Europe. And so they needed a place to share a safe space. And they remembered me from a television talk show I used to run back in Nigeria called Sharing with Yemi. And that talk show at the time, it ran from 1996 to the year 2003. And for the number of years, it was Nigeria's number one talk show on television. So we would talk then to societal issues and, and discuss issues that challenged people's lives. So some of them remember me, that's why they came to me. And so what happened then was from one person who came and shared a difficulty and we were able to have a conversation about it. She brought another person and then the, they both brought two other people and then they brought other people and other people and the numbers just grew. Take and I'm we started to think of ways. Take, I'm giving you as a mother. Uh, sorry, I'm just here. I don't know if somebody's talking to me. I'm hearing some talk in the background. Okay, so um, they started to uh, want to meet all the time. And we, we've we realized that this was a safe space for the women to come regularly to converse and to just pour out and share without being judged, without feeling out of place and recognizing as well, feeling comforted in the fact that they weren't alone in that boat. Uh, so that's how Shiro started. And a couple of years later, for some of the women, their husbands started to come into the country. And some of the husbands couldn't handle the women they now met. So for a woman who had left Nigeria, let's, let's take, for example, a Nigerian woman. A Nigerian woman who had left Nigeria, who didn't have an education, who was perhaps a retailer before she left, um, who had come to Ireland, who from coming to those gatherings, the Shiro's gatherings, had become empowered. And one of the first things I did with the, with the women was to tell, tell them, go to school, go to school. You cannot, you can never ever buy the value that education gives you, even though you're paying for the education, but the value you get from it is just unquantifiable. So a number of them went to school and they became empowered and became stronger women. And so some of the men could not handle that. So by the time the men started to come into the country, there was an increase in the rates of domestic violence because they still wanted to be controlling. Um, so we had to find ways to try and empower the men themselves and help them remember that a woman who is doing so well, who is your wife, is an asset to you. You should be proud of her rather than feeling intimidated. Uh, so. That's how the Shiro's Women's Network started. All the projects started to come on board based on what the needs were. And one of the needs then became 
the Shiro's Boys to Men project, when we were talking about how we were going to raise our children to be more respectful, because we see that the world is changing and things are changing as the world is changing. The way we raise children is changing. Um, there's a lot of focus on girls, on the girl child. There are a million and one projects out there that's concentrated on empowering the girl child, but very little about the boy. And so we thought if we're, if we're talking about women empowerment and we're talking about him, we're talking about um, quota system and we're talking about equality and justice for women, who are the people who make the decisions that impact the lives of these women? It's the men. So how, are we, how have we raised the men that they've forgotten to give respect to the women? We raise the men, we're the parents, we raise them. So what have we done wrong? At what point did we forget to tell them that when a woman says no, she means no, you know? So that's how the Shiro's Boys to Men started. And the goal of the Shiro's Boys to Men project is to raise boys to be good men. There are a number of projects out there now that are focused on men as well, trying to talk to men. However, the idea is to catch them young from when they are little, you know, from when they are little, start talking to them, start telling them about what they can do and who they can be and what they should be doing with their lives. If we plant it young, the Bible says, train up a child in the way it should go. When they, they are old, they will not depart from it. Now they may choose different lines, but somewhere along the line, the teachings will come to them when they need it. When those words that have been implanted into them when they were growing, that we've repeated over and over again, so much so that it's grown on them, when they need those words, those words will come to them. So that's what we're trying to do with the Shiro's Voice to Men project. The way it works, when we started, we initially started the project in 2017. Um, and when we started, what we did was to go into whatever we were at, going to towns and say to men, oh, would you like to be a Shiro's Voice to Men mentor? And a number of people said yes. And so we gave them the idea of what we wanted to do. And they would, we said, you start with 10, minimum 10 boys. And so they would start the Shiro's Boys to Men Club. But we realized along the way, two years down the line, we had a lot of learning. One of the major things we learned from the clubs was that these men who are mentors to these boys have also been raised a certain way. So they cannot give what they don't have. Now imagine a man who, who doesn't have empathy, who wasn't taught the importance of empathy, or a man who grew up very embittered, perhaps through an experience he had, but he's not been told how to get through that. And that man becomes a mentor. It becomes a challenge because no matter how great our curriculum is, this man is just going to hand it down the way he believes is right. So we would normally spend a day training the mentors, just teaching them our curriculum. But from our learning since last year, we decided to close all the clubs and start all over again. And this time work at the project with a double-edged sword. The mentors now, any man who signs up to become a Shiro's Boys to Men mentor, has to go through a three months training. So the idea of the three months training then is to first give the men themselves a reorientation, help them become better men, better fathers, better brothers, whatever it is they are to people within their community. When they are, when they have become, when they know how to be better husbands to their wives, then they become the mentor to, mentors to the boys and they can hand down our curriculum with a, a clearer vision in mind and as better people. They will have empathy. They would know how to understand the feelings of young boys, little boys who want to share, but are afraid to because of an experience they're going through at home. So our training, runs for three months for the mentors course first and then the mentors set up once they are done their training they set up the boys to the men club so the training is focused on the mentors and 
the way we've designed it now, each mentor sponsorship is 500 euros per mentor to go through the entire three months training. And then when they come out, they start off with uh, each, each mentor would work with 20 boys. The reason we've decided to limit the number of boys that the mentors work with is we don't want a crowd whereby they can't focus on each boy. So it's an all round program where the mentors get, in, in, they get involved for want of another word, they get involved in the entire life of the boy. So they know his parents, they know his school, they know everything about him. If he's having a challenge, they know where to refer him, but with the permission of the parents. So the parents are major stakeholders in this training, in this, um, in this work that we do with the Boys to Men project. A boy whose parents are not engaged at some stage, we will have to release him because the parents cannot put the total responsibility of raising their child on somebody else. That's why they're the parents. Whoever is going to do this work is supporting the work that they're doing. I find that a number of parents are so reliant on schools. When something happens, they tell their, they, they, they have a fight with the school. If something goes wrong in the school and say, but that's why I sent him to school. At the end of the day, if that boy is a good boy, he is your good boy as a parent. If he's a bad boy, he's your bad boy, not the school's bad boy or the school's good boy. So. Part of it is to remind parents of their role, that they were the ones that the Bible handed the kids over to as an inheritance, as a treasure to be, to be guided, to be raised, to be groomed. It's a responsibility we shouldn't take for granted. And it's not about money. I always said it, it's not about money. It's about the time we spend with the kids, showing them how to maneuver through life. We, we did a bit of research when we're redesigning our training program and two things stood out from you hearing young people talk about the challenges they have about life. Two major things. Young people said, one, that adults think, that they, we adults think we know what young people are thinking or going through and we have no clue. And I tend to think that is true because when I think back to when I was a teenager myself, the things I was thinking and the things I was going through, some of them I probably couldn't even tell my parents. So if we remember that we were once young people and we had challenges and we were finding it difficult to tell, tell people, and now the world is even more complicated, all the more reason why we should help our young people have a safe space where they can talk. Because I tell you something for nothing. If we are not the ones, there's a vacuum, whether we like it or not, there's a vacuum in every young child's life. If we are not the ones filling that vacuum, somebody else is filling it. The question is who is filling the vacuum? The second thing we found out from the young people was that they don't know how to navigate life. And so they're always looking for people to help them navigate life. Unfortunately, the people who help them are their pair. So the pairs tell them what they've tried and we don't know where that came from. And then they try it. And at the end of the day, they are not better off for it. They're disadvantaged most of the time and they get hurt. So we need to help them realize that yes, life is a struggle, life is difficult, but they've got people who they can go to who can guide them the right way because they're always seeking guidance. So the Shiro's Boys to Men project, our goal is that every year we would have uh, we would be able to train to start or we able to train. We, 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 let's focus on Ireland because right now Shiro's is in six countries. So Shiro's is in Ireland, is in Nigeria, is in Ghana, is in Sierra Leone, is in Malawi, and is in South Africa. So our Shiro's Boys to Men project is very active in Ireland, in Nigeria, in, in South Africa, and in Malawi. But let's focus on Ireland. So to kick off the training, um, we want to uh, test stuff with 20 men from me. I am from me, I'm from Napan. So 20 men from me. So I'm starting from my own, my home county. Yes, I'm not biased, I'm not biased. I'm on the rise. <laughs> 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 so it's 20 mentors from me. It will have at least one man from each town, each major town in me. 
And please God, actually, what we've reconsidered recently is if we have enough support for men from other places around Ireland, we will increase the numbers. But for now, we're focused on meat because of the sponsorship that we have for those number of men. And each man then, once he's done his training, will work with 20 boys. And if you multiply that then, our goal is in three years, we would have been able to train 200 mentors. And imagine 200 mentors, each with 20 boys. Those are the number of boys we're hoping we would have mentored in three years. And by then, we want the goal is to, see, to raise a generation of good men. The next generation coming. We want a ripple effect where... These boys, it's like train the tra trainers. These boys take what they've learned and just pass it on. Keep passing it on through their action, through their attitude, through peer pressure. I always say to my kids, somebody is always influencing somebody. Don't be the thermometer, be the thermostat. The thermometer takes on the pressure of any room it gets into. It takes on that pressure. But the thermostat changes the pressure of a room. So if you're a thermostat, if you get to a place where they're taking drugs, you're not going to take it. You're going to change the temperature of the room. You're going to be the one influencing rather than being influenced. Because the truth be told, our kids will find themselves sometimes in places they never bargained to be at. But they have to be equipped to be able to handle such situations. So I'm going to leave just stop there for now and allow for questions. That way it enables me to share other things rather than just go on talking. And um, it enables me to, to perhaps go into other things that people might want to know about. So while, every time I share the Boys to Men project, I always say to people, with the reason I'm very passionate about this right now, this is in my entire DNA, is I would love to see the next generation of men who rise up, who believe in, the, the power of supporting a woman. I'm not being biased, I'm just being factual and truthful. Because the reality is women are wired a certain way to do things slightly differently, you know? And for every man who recognizes the woman that he's been blessed with as a wife, a life partner, his life is the better for it. But we need to help our boys see that that when they get married to women, you know, it, it, she's not a property. She's not something you just pay for and then you do what you wish with. She's there to help you. The Bible defines her as a helper. Oh. So, I hope she's not blessed enough yeah. to have a woman okay. who can help him. Oh my goodness. Together they're dynamite. So we want to build the next generation of men who recognize what power they have when they have the right, the right attitude. The right attitude. Our kids have lost attitude. So we need to give it back. And then to help them believe in something. You stand for nothing, you fall for everything. You know, help them believe in something and hold strongly to the belief because faith is a powerful tool. I'm going to stop there now and then allow for questions or Great. comments. Thank you very much, Yumi. <laughs> Thank you. So, um, Thank you, Carl. Let's throw the floor open for questions from everybody. Um, All just, comments. If you want to ask oh. a question, please raise your hand. I can't see everybody. I can see most people. I think you're on mute already, Eli. Say something. So I can ask my question? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so uh, thank you for sharing, Councillor. It's, it's a very thank exciting you. project. That I'm, I've, heard, I've heard you talk about it a few times, and it's always um, very fascinating <laughs> to me. So I, I'm curious. Um, uh, I know, uh, I guess I'm curious, how can, how can we support if we want to help out? Because um, you mentioned something about kind of a sponsorship. I mean, is... Yeah. Is there something we um, donate for? Uh, are you looking yeah. for mentors? Like, how do how can we support mm. the project if it's something we are passionate about? Fantastic! Thank you so much for that question. Um, the first thing about our mentors is um, our mentors have to be affiliated to an existing organization. So, our, our model, our business model for this project, from the redesign, 
is one of collaboration and partnership. And the reason is when you have an existing organization, they also have their base and they provide the base then for the boys who become members of the Boys to Men Club. So anybody who's coming on to be a mentor, first of all, has to be affiliated with an existing organization. It could be a club, it could be a church, whatever it is, the group. so long as you have boys that within that area that you can mentor. And then it's that organization that signs that mentor on. So when the mentor, I'm, I'm, I'm explaining this just to explain how the mentorship itself works, mm -hmm. how people get on board the mentorship. And so anybody can actually be a mentor. You can be a mentor. So when you're going to sign up to be a mentor, there are three, normally in Ireland, if you're going to work with kids, you have to go through gather vetting. Mm. And once you do a gather vetting, that's it, you're cleared. But I find that process flawed already from the very beginning of it. Because how can you tell if a, if a man is a pedophile just because he doesn't have a criminal record? The reason he doesn't have a record is because he's not been caught yet. Mm -hmm. So you can't tell if a person is a pedophile or you really can't tell what mischievous things people get onto on, until they are caught. So rather than just go through the gather vetting, we've set in place three clearance process for ourselves. It's part of our process. So the first one is when you apply, you have to come with, through a reference. So if you intend, for example, you're saying you want to be a mentor, you have to get a ref reference, right? Um, you have to get a reference, right? So your reference then could be from within the organization that's going to sponsor you. So two references, as a matter of fact, it's like looking for a job. Then the second phase is the gather vetting phase, which we called the notary public phase. And the reason we, we don't call it just the police um, check phase or the gather vetting phase is because for countries outside of, uh, not uh, that are not Ireland, say like some places in Africa, they fear the priest more than they fear the policeman. Some people fear the lawyer more than they fear the policeman. So for those people, we're looking for the person that they have a bit more respect and regard for to be the lead person that they would go to, to do their check. So then whatever that country is, any person of uniform is the person that is their notary public. That's their second check. And of course, for Ireland, it's the data vetting. Then the third check is the community vetting. At a phase within the training, the mentor will have to bring together the community he's working within and tell them. So he's going to bring people who are stakeholders. It could be the church members, um, teachers from schools, um, uh, the, the policemen, people within this community that are important. And he's going to tell them at that gathering that he's going to be a mentor for the Boys to Men project. And he, parents will be there as well, of course. And that he needs them to vet him. So his community is going to vet him and say, we trust this man. We've known him for a number of years. Yes, he's good. And we trust him to mentor kids within our community. Mm -hmm. The reason we've decided to go through this line is because at the end of the day, the burden of responsibility is not just on Shiro's then. If anything goes wrong, God forbid, if anything goes wrong, people are not going to say, oh, he's a Shiro's mentor. Uh, he's yeah. our mentor because together we agreed that this man is good enough to mentor. So it's an entire community. So anybody who wants to be a mentor, that's the process. It's very simple and straightforward. Now, if you want to be a mentor, your organization that is sending you can sponsor you. They can pay for your 500 euros to come and be a mentor. Mm -hmm. And if you don't intend to be a mentor, if you want to sponsor a mentor within your community, you can do that as well. So to answer that second question of how can you support in terms of money, we have many mentors, who people who wish to be mentors within different organizations, but who don't have the funding. So if you put 500 euros, for example, towards Shiro's, you're definitely sponsoring a mentor. And we will tell you where your mentor is and who you're sponsoring. You know, we just pick one for you and tell you, this is the mentor you're sponsoring within this community. And if you want to get to know him, you'll be able to get to know him. Yeah. So I hope that answers your both questions. It does. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, um, and the I, more the more sponsorship we have, the more mentors we can take on board. The, the more I have a question. Have a question. 
Yes, uh, please. Um, could you put possible to share a little bit about the mentorship program itself? Uh, you mentioned how people are vetted to become mentor, but what yes. does the actual program of mentorship consist of? Like how, what kind of training do they go through? Like what kind of uh, things are taught in this, uh, to, to these people that become mentors? Yeah, in the mentorship program. Content okay, is so this, each, yeah. yeah, yeah. So each week, uh, the, the various topics that are taught each week, right? Um, part of it is for them to, first of all, self-discovery. So they have to find themselves. There are a number of adults who actually don't know themselves. They don't know themselves. So the first part of the training is focused on a journey. It's a journey of self-discovery. So they're going to be discovering themselves. Then there's another part of the training. I, do, I don't want to mention the, um, the modules. I don't want to talk about the modules yet. And the second part, but they, I'll tell you the phases. The second part then is confidence building. So one of the things we've discovered uh, is that a number of men, and I say this with all due respect, one of the challenges that they have, <laughs> they call them laughing, one of the challenges that men have in struggling with be as, either working with or working for or being with a woman who is powerful or a woman who is intelligent mm. is confidence, the struggle with confidence. And one of the things we're going to tr work with the men is to help them see, not necessarily find, because while they're doing the self-discovery, they will find themselves and find where their self-esteem lies. But then for them to see their confidence, it's inbuilt to see it and not be threatened by anything. They don't need to be threatened. So if they find where their strength, every single person has a strength. If they find where their strength is, like I'm here, Danny has a strength that I probably don't have. And I need her to support me, you know, in that area. So it's helping each person see their strength and not feel threatened by somebody else's. So that's part of the training as well. And then another part of the training is helping them learn empathy and how to sympathize. That way they build emotions. A lot of our boys were raised without emotions. We told, we parents told the boys that they shouldn't cry. No, stop crying. Boys don't cry. And so they don't know how to express emotions. A lot of the boys bury so much in that the only way they know how to take it out is by getting physical and to get angry and they want to take it out on something and most times they end up taking it out on the people they love. So it's helping them find that place of emotion. We want a lot of these people, they were boys and they've grown up to be men who sometimes, I've, I've met so many men who say, look, I don't have to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it because they don't know how. So it's helping them find empathy and their, yeah. their emotion. And enjoy it. Enjoy that because it's a, a strength rather than a weakness. Being able to cry and let things out. I'm not saying any man should cry, but you know, helping them understand it so that they can help the boys understand it, that it is a strength rather mm -hmm. than um, a weakness. And uh, the idea at the end of the day is to help them then, once they see it, they can hand it down to the boys. Because I still know many fathers who still tell their boys not to cry. Some mothers will say to the boys, stop crying like a girl. And I ask the question, how does the girl cry really? What does it even mean to cry like a girl? Is there a certain way a girl cries? So we need to help them feel, and that's part of the training that the men are going to get. And then we teach them the power of collaboration. Very important for this training, the power of working with others and feeling strength in working with others. You're stronger when you work with others. No man is in Ireland. So everybody has a strength, but you're stronger. And then helping them identify opportunities in working with others and use it, not just identifying it, three key things. They identify the opportunity, they take the opportunity, and they use it well. You can identify an opportunity and not take it. You can take it and not use it well. So being able to use those three things as well and then build an all-rounded man who can then hand that down to the boys? So I hope that helps to answer your question without necessarily mentioning the models. Jimmy, I have a question. Yeah, 
Uh, what uh, yep. age group are we talking about when you're dealing with uh, boys? What age? Would they be early teens or a bit older? Yeah, they are actually from nine to 18. Oh, nice. Now, the reason we include 18, nine, the boys to men club is nine to 16. Nine to 16. Mm -hmm. When they become 16, they move into the youth forum. They graduate into what is called a youth forum. So, but the actual club itself is from nine to 16. Mm -hmm. That's that's really when they're nine, yes, it's still we can still catch them at that age. We don't want them smaller because we're going to end up babysitting if we're not careful. And we don't want to do that. So we want an age where they recognize clearly right and wrong. And a nine-year-old knows right and wrong, clearly. And then an age where they get a bit rebellious. They're going to become teenagers and they're discovering and they're going through puberty and a lot is happening. Mm. Those are the years when they actually take on a lot of things without realizing it. Mm. And those are the years we lose them as parents without recognizing that we're not actually in their lives. So it's helped, it's those years, those formative mm. years, when we plant the right seed and hoping that it germinates well. Mm. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay. I have, sorry, another question. Yeah. Um, uh, how, how do you publish, publicize this or how do you, it's not the correct word, but how do you recruit these young people to, to teach them. How do we recruit the young people? Yeah, like how, how like how do you where do you find them? Like how do you uh... very good. Very good. If you if you remember I'd mentioned this when I was talking about when the mentors finish the training, we don't find the young people. The mentors do. We as heroes, boys to men project, mm -hmm. we don't find the young people. So yes. we can that's why I said we redesigned our training program. Mm -hmm. So during the training process, the mentors get to a stage, I think it's the eighth week or so, where they have to now bring their boys. So now I have to correct something. When they are going through their training, they finish the training with 10 boys. So by the time they're finishing the training, when they have the community vetting, that day when they have the community vetting, when they have the community come together, that day, they will have the boys who are going to be members of the club with them because they would have, during their training, as part of an, as a project assignment, they would have found your boy. So remember that I said that most of the mentors are affiliated to an organization. So if it's a church, they already have the youth group in the church mm -hmm. and they have members. So if it's a youth group, they have members there as well. Or if it's a school, they have youth group. Like that, yeah. 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 So they're already there. Yeah. So you you have, you have to um, kind of you advertise it. Basically, you it's a service. You're 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 educating how to become a mentor for youth leaders, yes. essentially, whether they're in sports clubs or churches or even in Absolutely. schools. And in, in, maybe not so much in Ireland, but even in Ireland, you could see it in maybe transition year or something where you'd introduce that Absolutely. program to interested. Uh, but the mentors, they are they overeating or obviously, oh yes yeah, oh definitely yeah. overeating all mentors yeah. are adults yeah and they're they're so they're vetted in ireland first of all you have the the, the base vetting would be the guard the vetting police vetting and then afterwards yeah. you have the community vetting by somebody yeah, in that club vetting. or 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 whatever organization by the entire community the community vetting yeah. is the entire community yeah so it could be yeah, so he has a, an event and he brings them all together mm -hmm. and then the vetting. Do you get so into we're things, have a conversation. Do you get into Sorry. stuff like Sorry. mental health and uh, other issues like that in the mentoring, the, the, the content of it? Like you're building oh, yes, character, you're building confidence. Do you get in? Like it's a big problem today, depression and mental health issues. Do you have... Yes, we, we touch on it as a module, but we don't go in depth. Right, and I'll tell module. you why. Yeah. Yes, it's a module. And I'll tell you why we don't go in, in, well? in depth. Yes. The reason Alcohol. we don't go in depth is because yeah. we have partners. Remember, I okay. told you that our business model is collaboration. Right. So we have partners who collaborate with us. So we can always mm. reference to okay. those organizations. 
Yes. Yeah. So we don't we don't treat issues that are not our forte. No, that's not no. our area. We just reference, sure. you know, when sure. need. Yeah. So to roll this out, then it, it's quite ambitious, isn't it? To 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 launch it in in into the public sort of consciousness. It's going to take a lot of effort and publicity, and maybe that's another way that we can maybe help in UPF. I hope that you can inform us. It's just I'm, I'm conscious of the time. It's eight o'clock, and I don't want to keep people too long. But I, I, yeah. I think with all the initiatives that we showcase here in our Cyber Faith uh, Roundtable, I want you know, Eli, there's an action point here and people can help. So maybe you'll you'll keep in touch with us about how we can support oh, most certainly. this project. Most whether certainly. it's you know, advertising <laughs> it or raising awareness or fundraising or contributing to fundraising events, please let us know because we're very eager to help. I think it's a very worthwhile project. I, I, I don't Thank know if anyone you. else any other burning questions they'd like to ask, Yami. comments or anyone inspired to share sorry i can't see your hand just bear with me a second no, uh, uh, up your hand if you have a question if you're on camera yes hello yes we can hear you uh, I just, just wondering uh, what about the similar program for girls mentoring girls by young ladies or Train ladies as yeah, we within Shiro's we have the Shiro's Girls Club. We have the Shiro's Girls Club, and that runs right. One thing we found is that girls are more eager. We have girls in the club already. I mean, like they just come, they bring their friends, they want to join the club. It's 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 more difficult to get boys to get involved in things like that mm. when it's not sports. It's difficult to get boys to right. share and talk. Mm. Yeah. So the girls come easily. They mm -hmm. have the Shiro's Girls Club. They actually, we have our leaders within the club. Now these girls were mentored within the club. They are now the leaders in the club. Two of those girls are directors within Shiro's, would you believe? Mm -hmm. So they have grown within that, but it's difficult mm -hmm. to get the boys to do that. So that's why this has become a focus. Plus, if you look around the world, there's a lot of focus on girls empowerment. So a lot of people are doing that anyway. Mm. So we really then have to focus on the boys who are the major decision makers in the boardroom. You find the boardroom full of men, you know, you find in healthcare, in, in politics, it's, so, it's all full of men. When decisions are made about women going on maternity leave, those decisions are made by men who don't even know what it feels like to carry a pregnancy. So... It's that thing of helping them understand and then mm. maybe encouraging that the status quo is, is, is you know, tweaked a bit. Mm. Uh, well, what about uh, mentoring for uh, uh, educating boys to be good husbands and girls to be good wives and mothers and boys being good fathers? That, I think from young Absolutely. age, from 12, from 12, that's very important. Yeah. Uh, how yeah. to be a good husband and how to be yeah. faithful to their future wife. That's very Absolutely. important. Yes, it's all within our module. It, it feels like you've had a peek into our training program. It's all within the training program. You know, it's, at the end of the day, if I may just sum it up, we want to build an all-rounded man who is a good man. He, he's a good boy first. A good boy will grow up to be a good man. A good man will be a good father. Whether he's married to the mother of the child or not, he will play his role as a father in the life of that child. And that's what a lot of boys are missing. In Ireland alone, over 220,000 boys live in fatherless homes. They miss the father's presence. And some of them actually have their fathers physically present, but are emotionally absent. And statistics shows that those boys, 76% of them are likely to end up using drugs. 77% are likely to end up in prison because of crime. So this is what we want to change. And these good men then, good man, a man who is good, will be a good husband to his wife. He will understand respect and not just ask for it, but he will know how to give it as well. He will cherish what he has and recognize her 
as what she, the Bible calls her, a helper, and celebrate her when the need be. He will empower her mm. to even recognize him more as a husband. And then a good man will be a good colleague at work. You know, he will respect a woman who is his boss, an executive, you know? What about uh, so mentoring? All around the program. Last, last question, mentoring sexual purity. Yeah. So, so conjugal fidelity to their future wife from 14 year old, you have to teach that to be, uh, to have fidelity to their future wife. And that has to do with, yeah. with uh, sexual purity. That's very important for future society and for their future as leaders, true leaders. And true, true fathers and true husbands. <laughs> Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, absolutely. Now, I cannot tell you, I'll be very honest with you, I cannot mm -hmm. tell you that uh, sexual purity is in the model. But I can tell you that while we're talking about relationships, there is a guide towards respect for self and respect for other people's bodies. And that's where we get the chance to, to share, talk about sex and early sex and sex before marriage. But we're not going to go into the depth of it. The reason being, we don't want to, we don't want to sound religious. We don't want people to think that we're a religious body and then, you know, but it gives us a chance to share mm. the things that are true and are just. Uh, Yemi, sorry, can I ask a question there? If you were, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. If you yes, were yeah, yeah. becoming a mentor from a particular church and we'll say abstinence education was very important in your church, yeah. I, yeah. I, I take it you could, um, when you, because you deliver, you go away and you become trained as a mentor and then you deliver that training within your church, right? Or your group, whichever group, yeah? So like you, you'd have your 10 or 15 or 20 people that you're mentoring. I think it's 10, you said, Max. Yeah, so you they, could, they you graduate could, with 10, yeah. Yeah. But I, I, I take it you could change the uh, some of the modules a little bit. Like if abstinence was very important, you said that well, that's not something you teach in the modules. Um, but I presume that there are certain things you could, uh, how would you say, not change, but uh, tweak or okay. improvise or adapt. That's okay. the word I'm looking for. Absolutely. I think uh, uh, improvise is the right word mm. because from experience, right? Mm. There are certain things that you don't necessarily impose, but yeah. you do or say things that are implied in what you want to yeah. teach. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? You share things because don't forget that you have kids mm. that are coming from various backgrounds. Sure. But we want to share a certain belief. Yeah. So we have implied ways and we totally believe in abstinence, mm. right? So in sharing, we teach them. That's why I, I talked about mm. teaching them, first of all, respect for themselves, for their body, and respect for other people's bodies. When they yeah. first understand that, then they understand sure. why that sounds a lot like important. consent, which is important, you know, for people. Exactly. I, I and guess my question understand, yeah, go on, go on, was go on. more like, you know, if, if, you're, if your group are all from the same denomination for example obviously you yeah. can emphasize a particular thing that would be important to your denomination oh i get what you're saying that's Absolutely. abstinence oh, yeah. or I get you, you know anti-abortion yeah. or something like yeah. that yeah yeah, yeah. I get that okay. completely yes obviously totally, if yes, it's, we can if do it's that. the local soccer club you know you're not going to yeah. try to impose your faith on them you're going to just give the no, curriculum no you know I understand yeah. what you're yeah. saying now yes that we can do yes we yeah. can do that very good. Does anyone else have anything to add? Not just a uh, thought. Pity that schools don't uh, emphasize this kind of education mm. for our kids rather than relationships and sexuality education. It should be mm. these things should be taught in school, like raise potential, like leaders of society, encouraging, mm. like um, like character like what's your strength talents mm -hmm. like yeah yeah raising uh, yeah, girls to be good mothers and i feel yeah there are things missing in school in the school system like in curriculum like pretty schools don't emphasize on this kind of education like preparing children to be good parents not 
yeah, okay, LGBT knowledge, and I feel, yeah, there is some agenda behind, but yeah, I don't know. I feel. Do, do you think there'll be resistance? Yeah. Have you met resistance to your to to the sheroes from like Ireland is becoming increasingly secular. Like, of course, the rest, the whole Western world is becoming very secular and they don't like anything more morals being preached. Do you think there's going to be or has there been resistance to your message in terms of from, from well, the so secular far, sort of so side? Far, of, no. no. Yeah, so far, no resistance. Mm. And this is what I say, just uh, to go back to what Daddy said there. Um, you see, change is something that people will always kick against change, no matter what form it comes, people will kick against it. And I've come to realize that we can't change the world, but we can change our community. Mm. And if we change our community and people see it, perhaps then they can take on board how we changed our community. They can decide they want to copy how we changed our community. So my goal is not to change the world, but to change my community. Mm. And maybe then somebody will see that model and want to copy it. The idea is to replicate it, just yeah. repeat it over and over again. So, um, as a best practice, there will be best practice. I know yeah. there will be resistance at some yeah. stage because the things we, we teach, they're not things that some people, that fits into some people's agenda. Mm. Mm. But I have a purpose, and my purpose is to make an impact. This is how I'm making an impact. I am. I recognize and I'm ready for people kicking against it. It's not the first time it will happen, but because I'm, I know what I believe in, and I, I know people who totally believe in the same thing. I am convinced, so I go with the people who need it. And when more people take it on board, they are what they're required to do is to pass it on. Don't keep it to yourself. Pass it on. So for each person who is impacted. Imagine if they passed it on to another and two pass it on to four, four pass it on to eight, eight pass it on to 16, 16 on pass it on to 32. We are really going to change the world. We start small and, and then the ripple effect. That's a, a lovely message. And you know what they say, behind every great woman is a great man. So we have the great <laughs> man here who wants to ask a question, I think. <laughs> Mr. Deji Adenuga. Go ahead, sir. <laughs> yeah, good evening. My good evening, superstar everybody. man. <laughs> yeah, this is a lovely, lovely meeting. And um, I've listened to Councillor Yemi. And um, I just want to add that mentor, this mentoring training is not teaching per se. It is to guide and yes. to lay down, lay down the principles of Shiro's Voice to Men, how to impact, you know, this training into the mentors. So we're just, we're just trying to say, I'm trying to say that it doesn't take away your religious background if you are a mentor. It will only add information to you in case you want to use your religious background to influence, to affect your own boys, your own mentees in your church, for example. The training is not going to stop you from mm. Uh, bringing in the teachings, the tenets of the church, of your organization. The mentoring does, uh, training does not take that away from you. What is only going to tell you, it's only going to guide you how you can use what you have to help these young people. And again, uh, the, as, as a mentor yourself, these mentees are looking up to you for certain things, for certain guides in life. You know the way counselor said, the young people, they don't know how to, na to navigate life. So they're also watching you. For example, Colum, you are mentoring a group of 10, 10 boys. These boys looking at you alone can give them a lot of hope in life because of the kind of a person you are. Even when you have not opened your mouth, they're looking at you, they want to be like you. So the training is only going to guide you to use the tools that you have already. So there's no way it can, uh, 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 it can stop you. For example, if you want to help them along the line of abstinence, you already have tools to use to help them in that area. The mentoring training is not going to stop you from using that tool. It's only going to guide you how to use it effectively. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, Deji. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, so we have. Thank you, Ambassador Deji. Matthias, <laughs> you have a question? Hi. Hi. Um, Chancellor Adenuga, thank you so much for your message. Um, I want to make a kind of a compliment and, and really to commend you in a sense. Um, just like you said, there's so much work out there done for women and all that. And the, the, the issue of domestic violence is a real one. Well, all I hear is literally sending a helicopter and removing the woman from the house when, when, the, when the issue is, is happening. But you, you really address the issue that I was thinking about myself. Who's taking care of the perpetrator, really? They're just going to be left there and they're going to continue doing what they're doing. So this is the kind of thing that needs to be done. You need to resolve the problem from, from its roots, not just you know remove dead leaves and all that, but really tackle that. And that, for me, is one of those things, just like many other issues that are around the world that get talk, talked about, like climate change. Now I know that you know there's somebody working on it and I can just... I can... I can then turn to other matters and think and not have to worry about it because I know there's somebody working hard at it. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for your work. And I do wish all the, uh, the most success for you and your political endeavors as well. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you for your kind words. I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. And you can be a mentor too. <laughs> <laughs> indeed, so, um, indeed. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for joining us from the four corners of Ireland. We have people from Cork, we have people from uh, Northern Ireland, from um, Carrick Fergus, from Liechtenstein, yeah. from Galway. I see we have Mr. Diodin Ahmed. I'd like to say hello to him as well. Um, from Dublin, from Calvin, from Navan, from Dunshotland, from the four, and from also Balbriggan, I think. So, does anyone have a question? I can't see you all. Just before we go, I'd like to remind you that our next um, Inter Cyber Faith Roundtable will be hosted or presented by uh, Mr. Bruno Maurice, and he'll be talking about EduCare. But let's all wait and see what we can do to get more information from Yami in the future, how we can support this very worthy initiative. Personally, I work with um, a soccer team, I guess, and, you know, obviously working in church as well. I mean, it's always important to, to find out how, how can we get resources to help young fellas or, you know, to become good men as, as, as the Shiro's motto goes. I hope I had it right, Jamie, you know, helping uh, boys become good men or young boys become good men or boys to men or whatever, but it's about character education. It's about educating the future society, future generations to become good fathers, um, good individuals. And if we have good fathers and good individuals, we've got good families and we have a, a foundation for a much better society in the future. So thank you so much for your, for your hard work. And yeah, thank please you. reach out to us and let us know how we can support you if you need some donations or you need some fundraising or you need somebody to come and mentor. We have people here from different churches and different organizations and I'm sure they would love to be part of what you're doing you know so please reach out to us and let us know will you can you see me <laughs> sorry I can't see thank you, you so much yes we can see you I just want to say thank you so much I really really appreciate this yeah. and the platform as well our pleasure thank you pleasure I'm very ours. grateful God bless you all. Thank you. And let's look forward to the next uh, cyber. And thank you for supporting our initiative, by the way. And we hopefully we will see you again in two months' time. Everybody, Absolutely. try to bring a friend and watch it back on YouTube and on Facebook and like our page, our UPF Ireland page, if you can. And thanks to Pinko as well for organising it. So, I'd like to just uh, say goodbye to everybody and see you soon in two months' time on the, uh, <clears throat> what is it, the 6th of February, February Cyber Faith Roundtable. So keep an eye on the WhatsApp group and the Facebook page, and I'll be emailing people as well. And thank you so much for supporting the initiative. Thank and you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, God bless you, everybody. Have a happy new year. Bye, God bless you. Bye, everyone. Happy Christmas. Happy New Year. Well. Bye. 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 B